Hi folks, I'm Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition and it's time for another monthly roundup video. So this is the video where I take stock of the changes that have happened in my board game collection over the last 30 days and I invite you guys to play along at home. I'm very curious to see what you guys have been playing. Hey guys, um, yay, a whole other month has passed. Where has the time gone? I don't know about you guys, but it seems like time is flying super fast at the moment. Um, I hope you're enjoying some sort of holiday perhaps or looking forward to one because the weather is good. Would you bring games with you on your holidays? I don't know, I'd be tempted, but I don't really get holidays. Our holidays are usually here at home doing something around the house or just, you know, chilling for the time. But I wonder if I went further afield when I bring a game. If you would, what would you have brought? I'm curious, I'm curious to hear that. I see a lot of people like talking about bringing games on camping trips and weekends away and I'm just like, oh, would I, would I get them played? I could play those at home. Yeah, I don't know, it's just a strange thought. So yeah, um, it's been a, an interesting month for board games. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's been a ton of things on Kickstarter. Um, maybe you've backed something, anything that took your, took your fancy. Um, caught your eye, um, you know, why not let me know about it. Kickstarter is one of those things that I very, 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 very rarely do. And if I do, it involves a lot of research and calculating and things like that. I think that's partially because um, things on Kickstarter can be quite expensive, you know, the like the bigger games. And yeah, maybe they're cheaper than they're going to be at retail, but it seems like a lot of upfront for something you don't see, you know, soon or possibly immediately or ever, depending on the campaign you've backed. But um, as a whole, it has to be something particularly special or something I know we enjoy. So like we back the Lorenzo Kickstarter because we like Lorenzo, extra cards, you know, that kind of stuff is really a no brainer. Um, but some of the bigger things, you know, the unknowns, just a no. And also I'm not really that into minis. So like I said, it has to be something special to have caught my eye. So, but despite that, um, and I'm gonna start by jumping into the new games acquired this month. One thing we backed on Kickstarter arrived. Woo! So I'm going to start off with that with my new games list and this is Space Explorers from 25th Century Games and it's from the same designer who made Viceroy. You guys are familiar with Viceroy? It's a game people don't talk about a lot um, but it's one my husband loves. Um, I've never succeeded at but I can I can see the merits so it's a good game. But Space Explorers is a retro themed space game where you're trying to complete um, basically space projects by hiring the right people for the job. A lot of people compare it to Splendor, you know, you buy the thing to get the thing to get the thing, but it's definitely got a few more quirks than that to make it stand out a bit. Um, I really like it, it's, it's quick, it's simple. I can't wrap my head around the symbols. Don't get, I have no idea why. There's only four and for whatever reason, I just can't read them correctly. Um, but I do like it quite a bit and, and it's satisfying. I can I can see the Kickstarter appeal to have something, you know, just turn up at your door that you forgot about. Um, so that's cool. I think we have another couple of Kickstarters due over the next month or two. We uh, we backed a couple around the same time, so they're all kind of due together. Um, so that's kind of, I, I, yeah, I, I can see why people might like that. It was kind of fun having this turn up without having to, you know, do anything to make it happen. So that was Space Explorers. So sorry, I have to look at the list on my phone today. I don't know if you've got noticed my new setup, Ooh, uh, yeah, I put a lot of thought and effort into putting this together. Um, so uh, someday I'll do a tour, right? Because this is the biggest room in our house. Actually, it was once the master bedroom and moved into a smaller bedroom so we would have a better games room. Yeah, yeah, that's dedication for you. Um, but in here, um, out of the four walls, we had an entire wall full of Kallax and then another wall kind of with Kallax as well. And we have a very cool drop leaf table with drawers in it. I think that's amazing. And I have a, I have a big desk. Now the truth is, don't need a big desk, but uh, buying a cheaper desk would be terrible when you already own a big desk. So I have a big office desk, um, you know, where I do all my tweeting and whatever at. Um, and the thing about changing around this room is I couldn't do it in such a way that I could have an empty piece, um, piece of wall. I wanted a blank wall behind me because I wanted um, these videos to be a little bit more me and a little bit less, you know, I'm making my first set of videos and going to be in front of all of my games. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. Um, and I feel like I've grown enough that I should have something a little more me. Um, so I did a lot of rejigging. Um, I've in fact stacked too many collapses on top of each other. I don't know if you can, you can't really see behind me. This goes all the way to the ceiling. Um, to create this like three foot or so piece of wall um, that I could, you know, make my own scene for filming. 
Um, and I really wanted to do something very cool, like, you know, gentlemen's club, sitting in the wing back chair, you know, by the fireplace, swilling your, uh, whatchamacallit, whiskey and whatnot. I wanted something kind of old man. <laughs> um, because I feel that's very me, actually. Um, now, it's not turning out exactly as I had planned, but I think it's an improvement. I hope you, I hope you guys like it. I'd really like your feedback. I got some great feedback, actually, when I originally set it up and I put some pictures out on Twitter and Facebook to see what people said, and they were like, move this and do this. Um, and I was like, okay, that's actually a really good idea. So I'm off to one side now, because that's like the narrator style, which I like very much. And because it's hot here this week, my husband bought us a fan, not realizing it fitted in beautifully with my scheme. So now I've kind of gone, old man meets jungle theme you know old colonial it's kind of thing with my map of the world but i definitely feel like um it's more me and i love my chair <laughs> i have wanted one of these chairs for absolutely ages um i think there's something to be said about for how comfortable you are when you're doing things you know and what furniture you're on and how you set yourself up so for instance when i used to lecture um or give talks i would prefer to sit down because i get extra nervous when i'm standing and you would you know you would see me shake and stuff like that so it was a conscious decision making youtube videos that i i would sit down because it, you know it's a bit easier um and so i think having the right kind of not quite furniture like i can i'm very comfy now as <laughs> as opposed to you know my regular chair um so i think there's something a little bit more relaxed about it so do you guys believe in stuff like that that you you know your surroundings can really dictate to how you feel when you're you know doing things and working at things um i do i know this is an awful bit of a tangent but it is important to my channel that i uh, you know and I, I i love getting um feedback and things like that so hopefully this works better um and we'll see how it goes it's interesting actually a lot of I mean, a lot of people suggest that I show more of the shot for me sitting in the chair um, and it made me realize actually there's a very specific reason why I have the shot like this I would actually have it closer like I, I used to if I could but then you wouldn't be able to see all the cool stuff behind me and you know what I just don't want to put my body out on the internet I think um, you know people find ways to hurt you and I think if you don't give them to people then they can't hurt you with them um, so I think it's simpler to cut everything off like that, um, like this. And also I think it would just be kind of, it might be a, a not quite a distraction, because that's a terrible word, but just something for somebody to focus on other than what I was talking about. So I want this all to be, you know, board game, board game, board game, she says while talking about furniture. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> the actual the actual point of all of this was that I have to use my phone to look at my notes today because since I moved everything around, I used to be able to film my uh, monthly roundups at my desk so I could have everything on my screen in front of me and do very little setup. So today I've had to do the whole hog um, and set everything up, but I'm reading my notes off this because I'm saving paper. So right. <laughs> so yeah, so we started with Space Explorers and then I'm going to jump into Keyflow. So Keyflow is one is a, a Euro game in the vein of all the other key games. So I spoke about Keyflower last month. Um, oh, we didn't get Keyflow. It's actually Keeper. Oh, sorry, I can see it in front of me there. I don't know why I've written it down as Keyflow. Is that the original one we have? No, I have Keyflower and Keeper, but Keeper came this month. Um, my husband really, really loves these. And you can see I get confused by the titles because they're all key something. Um, but yeah, I haven't got around to playing this one yet, but based on the basis of how much we enjoy key flower, <laughs> um, I think this is going to be really fun. It's got a really cool looking map aspect. Um, it's, you know, you build your villages, um, and stuff. So it's all, it's all very similar, but slightly different. And I look forward to playing that. So I haven't got that one out yet. Um, we had guessed round and we played key flower instead. Um, and that was pretty fun. So we'll get to the new one eventually. Um, but yeah, so key, key flow. Um, ours is from R&D Games. Some other copies seem to be from Hooch Games. So I don't know where these are all coming from. Okay, so the next thing we got this month, and this one I'm really excited about because my husband picked it up without me telling him to. So this this is awesome. So we get a copy of Die Tavernen im Thiefen, Thiefen Thal. Um, so this is from Wolfgang Warsh, who you may remember from such amazing games as The Quacks of Quidlinburg, The Mind, and a host of other games he's brought out in the past year. He's brought out tons and tons of things. Um, and I saw quite a few people playing this actually on Twitter and things, and I was just like, really like his games. And the theme is that you're running an inn and you're trying to cater to your patrons and grow your inn. Um, it's a dice management um, and deck building game. 
like what a combo right um but my husband managed to snag a copy um he was he was watching for it and he didn't tell me and i was like this is the best day ever it's a fabulous game i really like it you it's, it's got a set length as well you only play over i think is it seven or two, seven turns or maybe eight seven eight they're very close numbers um seven or eight turns and you're basically getting money and beer to improve your place and get better patrons into your deck um it it reminds me a lot of Grand Austria Hotel but it's much quicker it's much looser and it really does feel like a Wolfgang Warsh game so if you like something like Quacks this really has a, a similar vibe and I'm delighted with it and it's got some really cool components as well so I'm uh, super chuffed with that it's not out in English yet this is the first time I've ever bought a game in another language we don't do it on principle but the truth is it's language independent um, there's a rule book written um, in English on Board Game Geek and we use that and it's, it's completely adequate um, so thank you to the people who do those kinds of things, you know, who make games accessible for more people. I, st I think we just, we didn't want to wait till it came out in English. Does that make sense? It's just like, we really want to try this, so yeah, we'll go for it. So that's basically how it went. So that's the Tavern in Tiefenthal. I keep wanting to pronounce it like there's a H there, there isn't, it's T-I-E-F. So that was good. Okay, then the next thing that arrived is the first game we've ever pre-ordered, and this is Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles. Ooh. So we've still not finished our Gloomhaven campaign yet. We're a good 30 plus games into it. So I assume there can't be too much more to go. But uh, my husband really likes Gloomhaven and when the option came to pre-order the expansion, he was like, okay. And I don't think it was actually very expensive either. Um, I've done an unboxing video for this, actually, as I have for Die Tavern and Im Tiefenthal. And I can release one of them next week. So which one would you, ra which would you rather see? Because unboxing is our those weird things that don't make sense to me but I do them because they're they're easy and if they're helpful to somebody why not go for it um so yeah which one would you rather see um I need to make somehow I need to make a poll comment comment below if you'd rather see an unboxing for a D Tavernan and Tiefenthal or the new Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven expansion without any spoilers um there seems to be a lot inside the box which I found very impressive I haven't had obviously haven't played with it yet because it's still there but I had a good route round. there's like a new character um there's new things for your map there's achievements you know it actually just adds a little bit more of everything else to the game so I think that I think that's nice especially when you like something I don't mind having an expansion in advance do you guys ever feel that way do you get an expansion for something even though you haven't played a lot of it yet because you know it's just going to be that good yeah, I, we, we do that quite a bit right here. <laughs> okay, and then I have one more new game required this month. And this is one I've wanted for a while, but it got really, really cheap. So this is Charterstone from Stonemaier Games. And it's the, I think it's the only game from Stonemaier Games I've not played. Um, and for a while, uh, like, a, you know, about six, seven months ago, it got very, very cheap. And we almost bought it and we didn't and completely regretted it. So yet again, my husband, with his brilliant searching skills, uh, managed to find it for a very reasonable price, for something like 30 euros. It's gone down to 20 euro cents, of course, typical. Um, but when we were, when it arrived, I didn't realize just how big the box was. Like, it, it's huge. I can't believe how much is in there for that price. Um, also, I haven't played it yet because my husband's determined to play a couple of games of it together. It's a legacy game. Um, I think you build things. I don't know much about it because it's it's all very mysterious because inside the boxes, you know, hidden boxes. So you're not supposed to know everything yet. So I can't tell you anything about it other than, you know, uh, whatever you do will affect what you do later because that's the nature of legacy games. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's very cute looking and it's very kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of easy and fun. I'm probably terribly wrong with this perception, but um, I'm looking forward to it. And I like that it's only a set number of adventures as well. We haven't really done a lot of legacy gaming in our house. So I think it'll be kind of fun to like play the same game over and over again um, till you get good at it. <laughs> Talking about you, Rise of Fenris. That game taught me how to play side. Um, so yeah, so that is the last thing um, that we bought We bought this month. Um, and a lot of these were just things that were, yeah, bargains. Um, I think the only thing that we really were requesting for was D. Tavern and, and M. Thief and Hal. Um, but other than that, yeah, like, I don't feel the need to buy as many games as I used to. I think we're, we're pretty much um, at our peak or at our max. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Because I did get some more games and these are review games. So these are games you shall be seeing reviews for in the future. So the first, um, actually this is all from one company. This is from Daily Magic Games, so thank you kindly guys, um, who sent me out some really cool stuff. 
Um, all of which are games I've not played before, um, but really enjoyed. So I've played a little bit of these. Um, I will play more, obviously, because you know, that's what reviewers do. Um, so the first thing that arrived is Villages of Valeria. So, oh, it's actually here. It comes in a beautiful box. Yoink. See, and it's got a sleeve. I think there's something so fancy about the sleeve. I think the sleeve is here for it to keep everything in the box because it likes to explode. But it is a, a little card game where you basically, you build a tableau um, and you, you know, build up a village, as they say, um, to give you enough points to win the game. You know, sim simple idea. Um, the artwork in it is really, really lovely. It's really fun to play. I quite like it and it's quick. Um, I think I could do with more of these type of games in my life. I, I, I you know, I really appreciate it. Um, it reminds me of Imperial Settlers a little bit because there's a portion where you put your cards upside. You can either play them one way up or another to get a benefit now or benefits for the rest of the game. So that feels very familiar. Um, but I really, really liked it. I also got some expansions for it as well, which I'm working my way through, um, which are Guild Halls, Monuments, landmarks and architects so these are all different uh, packets so two of them came in like booster packets one came in a box with some very cool little meeple things and i found that the base game was a little straight laced but the addition of even just the first expansion really helped it a lot so i'm looking forward to adding in more to see how it goes but so far so good it's a really solid game i really like it um the second thing that arrived then is horizons also from Daily Magic Games. And this to me feels like a tiny Twilight Imperium. <laughs> it's, a, it's a space themed game where you have planets that make resources. Um, you've got your own board where you kind of, you work out the prices for everything and you put out your buildings. Um, uh, most of the rewards are area control. And then there is also kind of <clears throat> like reward cards. I'm not calling those correctly. What's the word? You know where you get a card at the start of the game and then goes here, if you do this, you can have this many victory points. Yeah, okay, I'll come back to it. <laughs> achievements, maybe achievements, yeah. Um, so the game focuses around those quite a lot. Um, it doesn't take particularly long to play, it, it's easy. And I really like the theme. The coloring is really interesting. And most of it is purples and blues. It's really like 80s space. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it, especially if you like those big space games, but you don't have time to play a big space game. I think, yeah, it's, it's got a lot going for it. I, I look forward to playing more. And I use that sentence way too often in these things. I look forward to playing more. I, I need something more original to say. Um, I can't wait to get it back to the table. Yeah, that's not a whole lot better, right? <laughs> so those are all the games that have arrived this month. Um, have you got any new games this month? Have you bought anything? Um, what was, well, you know, why did you buy it? That's the most important question. Um, you know, what made you buy it? I'd love to hear what you guys have been adding into your collection. All right, so the next section is going to be short this week. This is trades. Um, I love talking about trades. I love getting trades. I think we've arranged another trade as of yesterday, but there's no point putting that in this monthly random video um, because the game's not here yet. But we did make one trade and I was very happy about it. Most of you, or some of you might think I'm crazy, but I traded for Res Arcana um, and I sent away Tricarian. Um, so Tricarian is a, a mind flash game. It's it, it was a Kickstarter game and it's about making magic. Um, it's it's a worker placement game, you know, at its core, um, and basically trying to optimize everything you're doing to perform the best tricks for the best rewards. Um, we didn't mind it, but it just it didn't drive us crazy. Um, it didn't make us mad. Like we we had it here for a year and we'd only played it the once, and we're never really encouraged to play the second time. Um, so we literally we so we played it like twice more to be sure, um, and we said no no whatever. Um, so Res Arcana, for those of you who don't know anything about it, is from the same designer as Race for the Galaxy. Woo yeah, I know, that, that's how I felt about it too. Um, and it's a, it's a game where you get eight cards in your deck and you build them into a tableau to buy things that are worth victory points or, you know, help your tableau so you can buy better victory points things. Um, it sounds kind of basic like that. But there's something very odd about getting a handful of completely unique cards um, and trying to figure out how to make them work in the best order to achieve things. Um, I really quite like it. In the, on the one hand, I like that it's kind of it's it's not well. It is the what the hand you get is the deck or hand you get is random, right? So um, it does. You have to work with the unknowns. But I'm also disconcerted by the fact I didn't control any of the things I played um, that they were already given to me. You know what I mean? It's that kind of, 
it's not a deck builder, you're given a deck and you make the best of it, but you kind of wish you'd had a say in it. Now there is a drafting variant, I've not tried it yet, but I, I'm, I'm going to sound really contradictory, but I have a feeling that if you did draft it, that it wouldn't be as interesting because the cards wouldn't be alien to you when you played with them. So you see where I'm at here, there's this horrible divide between it's good that it's random and unusual and you don't have control over it. It's bad that it's random and unusual and you don't have control over it. Um, it's a really interesting game, I really like it. Um, now, you know, our trade probably wasn't the most amazing, but we're at the point now where we have a lot of games to trade away. And I would much rather have a game, um, even if it's worth less value than what I traded away, um, than not than be sitting here, you know, with games I know I don't want to play. It sounds a bit odd. Like it's hard. It's hard for us to trade as a whole. Um, the sh shipping from Ireland is is expensive. Um, a lot of the time when we trade for something, we've basically paid for half of the game just by shipping something away. Um, yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy. It's hard to trade in Ireland itself. We do pretty much all of our trading with the UK, and to trade with the UK is like to send a box is like roughly fifteen euros. So that's most of the price of a game most of the time. Um, but I think it's just it's a good way to you know send your games on to other people and what are we going to like there's no point in us continually buying things there needs to be a place for these to go so I like that we keep cycling these things and to give you a hint it looks like we managed to trade this month so I got um, sent away claustrophobia and um, a really cool two-player dungeon game that we were never getting to the table Mystic Veil, vale, um, which, you know, we've had here for ages actually. Mystic Veil vale is what came, we've had a really long time, but we just grew tired of for a copy of Snowdonia, um, which is a game about trains. That's what I heard. We don't really have train games apart from Ticket to Ride, so I think that would be cool. Um, I'll fill you in better next month <laughs> when I know if all of this pans out. So yeah, so do you, have you guys traded for anything? Um, with, I assume you'd like to. Is there a reason you wouldn't want to trade with people? I don't know. But it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, trade, you know, trades has the positives and the negatives, really, doesn't it? Um, it would be cool if it was so much simpler, wouldn't it? Okay, so the last section I'm talking about today. Um, normally, I go straight into kind of wish lists and stuff like that, but I don't have one. But I thought I would talk about the games we've been playing, and and there's a reason for this um, because. So the, this last month or so, we've been working hard through the games that are on the maybe shelf. So we've quite a lot of games that we've played once, maybe twice, and are still aren't sure if they're keepers or, or not. Um, and our rule in our house is we have to play everything three times to make a decision about it, right? And that seems fair. Now, we don't always have to play it three times. Sometimes, you know, after the first or second play, you know that this is a keeper, right? You don't have to go the whole hog. But in the last week or two, we managed to make a real dent in, you know, what we've been playing. And the, the issue actually that's come up a lot is the fact that maybe other people have this problem too, is that when you have a good amount of games or games that you've curated, right, that you know are things that you like, you're not just buying stuff willy nilly, right, you chose these things for a reason, it makes it very hard for new games to stand up against what you've already got. So when I talk about the games I've added to trade this month, it's not because they're bad games. They're really not for the most case. It's just that we had something better or something that fitted us better. And I'm kind of, that kind of thought makes me a little sad, I suppose. Um, but I guess it should make me proud because I'm all about curating your collection, right? The perfect collection, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's weird to be going, this is a really good game. It's just, I don't think we'll ever get it to the table and, and sending it on its way. Um, but it does hopefully mean that we're downsizing things a bit. I want a more manageable collection than we've had. But you know, I think sometimes when you get into a new hobby, a new hobby you go a little bit crazy trying to catch up with everything, right? Like I know I did. There were so many things on my list I wanted to play, I wanted to try out. And you know, we, we got these games to be able to do that with. And now that things have settled down a bit, I'm like, well, I'm actually quite happy with what we have. Um, I don't need all the newness, the hotness anymore. Um, I've got plenty of good things here to work my way through. So that's blabbing, but I wonder does anyone else feel like that about their, their games, about new games in particular, like how you fit them into what you already own. Um, so first they have to really be a standout or to be something special or to do something that we don't already have. So here's the games that we were clearing. So I'm going to start off with d both Dinosaur and Dulasaur Island. Um, so I got Dinosaur Island at Essen last year. It was one of the first things on my list I really, really wanted. Um, 
And we played it after we got home and I remember it feeling quite a fiddly but you know but not too difficult it was fine and we tried a number of times to play it again like there's at least twice where we set it up and then took a look at it and went oh god I just I just can't do this right now and so we got another game or two of it in and you know what it's just so basic <laughs> um you know it's it's like oh I, yeah, that's basically how basically how we put it. It was just so straightforward. Like there's no variation in the type of dinosaurs you get or or even the fact that you can just trade two DNA for another DNA. For those of you that don't know, um, uh, you know, Dinosaur Island is basically Jurassic Park, the board game with cool neon colors. And those I really appreciate. But there's a couple of places where things could have been explained better or put on mats or the boards. You know what I mean? The game itself is produced beautifully, but I just think it's missing a couple of very important things to give it a bit of polish. Um, and so while I think the game is cool and I think a lot of people might enjoy it for us, it was just like, uh, no. <laughs> um, and we felt the same about Geolosaur Island, which is the two player variant. So this is one with cards instead of meatballs. And it's roughly the same thing. We just felt like we were doing the same thing every turn. Um, you know, and that's just not that's just not fun for everybody. I'm sure I'm sure people love it and that's fab, but we just I just think we'd buy we things that we would rather play than it. So that was the first one. The second game is one that we've also had for a really long time, and this is Alien Artifacts from Portal Games. Um, we do love a good card game in our house. Um, used to play Magic the Gathering a lot. Um, so we've kind of high expectations of card games, so we're very careful of uh, careful about which ones we choose. So Alien Artifacts is a tableau builder, you're in space, you're buying things to build out your tableau, that's, that's basically it. Um, actually it's a really good game, <laughs> we, we quite enjoyed it, I just we found it slightly too long for what it was. That game should be a 30 minute game and it's more like an hour-ish and that's just with two of us playing, I can't imagine it with more people. So I actually think it's fine, it just it just didn't cut the, the Cut the, I can't finish this, what? Cut the metal? Yeah, maybe cut the metal. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very good game, just slightly too long. Because we were like, well, we could play such and such and such and such in this amount of time. Or if you, or we find if games go up to the hour mark, there's even more competition for games that take an hour's play as opposed to 30, 40 minutes. Um, so yeah, so Alien Artifacts, good game, wish it was slightly shorter. Um, next up, so Great Western Trail. Um, We've actually had this one a good while. So these are all games actually that have been there for a little bit. And we, we'd already played two games of Great Western Trail. Um, and you know what? It's a very good game. I can see why people love it. Um, you know, but to us, I suppose it just felt a little bit clinical. So Great Western Trail is a game where you're moving around a map to bring your cattle to the train at the end and then transport them and reset. Um, and I really like a lot of things about it. I love the player boards where you remove markers from them as you achieve things and then your player board gets better. Love that. Um, you move around the board um, and you activate things. Also pretty cool. And you collect cows. Very good stuff. The problem we found was that you always ended up doing the same things each time. So there's particular spots on the map where you can hire workers to make everything you do better and go and acquire cows. And they always ended up as being places that you had to go all the time. Um, it just feels a little bit, I don't know, too perfect, is that a word? As in, it's, you, you can plan it all out, I guess, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It just felt like it was missing something, something. But I do think it's a, a really, really good game. And like, you know, I, I can, lots of people love it and I can see why. Um, you know, and the truth is I wouldn't mind playing it again if someone asked me to. Um, but where where we like where we put it in our collection or when we play it, mm, difficult. Not entirely certain. So that got moved down as well. So there's one game that got moved up. <laughs> Thank God, out of all the, the negatives. Um, and this is Tolkien. Um, Tolkien is like the, the temple game with the, the moving cogs. Um, so yeah, it helps that it, it's very pretty, but it's also so clever. So we played Tolkien twice already, and every time we played Tolkien, we played it with a ruling correct. <laughs> every time, without fail. So we were determined this time to play it with all the rules correct. We didn't actually succeed. <laughs> we almost succeeded, I know it did halfway through the game, but we got there. Um, so yeah, Tolkien is basically about gathering food um, to build buildings go up the temple track and you know appease yourself with the gods 
Um, it's it's a lot of those resource management games, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, what's clever about Tolkien is the fact that the board is constantly changing and you have to keep up with what it's doing and you have to also know what your opponent's doing to be able to take advantage of things. And there are a whole variety of tracks you need to keep an eye on. Um, I learned you probably shouldn't focus on all of the tracks because then you do everything badly. It's the kind of game that even when I lose, I really enjoy. Um, so Tolkien got promoted, hooray, something made it up there. To be fair, Reza Arcana also got promoted as did um, Die Tavern and Imtif and Tal. Um, they're both, you know, really solid games and ones I think that will, you know, stay in our collection for some time. So how do you guys deal with, you know, new games or even games you've had a while, you know, that shelf of shame thing. I hate that phrase, shelf of shame. No, they're just, they're games, you just haven't got to them yet. You know, it's not that difficult. Um, <laughs> people get there eventually. I, like, on the one hand, I guess, should you be embarrassed about having a bunch of stuff you bought and not used? I don't know, that's up to you. So there's different reasons for doing these things, you know. Sometimes you'll buy a bunch of stuff together because it's cheap, you know, and you'll get to it when you get to it. And that involves saving money, so you never know. But yeah, so tell me how you guys kind of decide what happens with your new games or do you kind of go through the games you currently own and decide if you want to keep them or not? And is that a viable practice? Is that something we should all be doing, you know, keeping check in our collection? I'd like to think it might be um, because, you know, your changes in taste, you know, changes in taste, your taste change over time. I'm sorry, I can't speak at all today. It's been a very long week. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's basically what's been happening here at Board Game Inquisition. I've put out um, some fun new reviews this month. If you haven't had a chance to check them out, why not do so? Um, I'm also very curious to know is why some reviews do worse than others. I think it's just, it has to be the game, right? You have to be tempted in by the title of the game to, you know, come and have a look and see what it's about, don't you? I don't know. Is there a way I could sell this, I could sell them better to you, you know, that you'd be more inclined to come watch things? Who knows, who knows? I just like, I just like getting games in front of people. I don't really care if you like them or not by the end, but I think at least you've been informed, right? Been informed. So yeah, so I think that's it for this month. I look forward to hearing all your responses below. This is my favorite part of the month. I, I love getting to chat to you guys um, and hear everything that's been going on with your board games. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions and sweltering in this goddamn heat. Mm. All right, take care, everybody. Bye bye.